Welcome to E39 Source. It's nighttime. We've got Canon's 2002 E39 M5 here. We're going to be doing pre cat oxygen sensors. It's the same exact thing for the post cat, slightly different part. So, um, quick DIY. It shouldn't be too bad, assuming that yours aren't totally seized in there. Um, obviously, step one is going to be get to uh, get the car in the air. A lift would be perfect. We just use the center jacking point, a jack, um, and then put six point or six ton jack stands on both front jack points uh, for safety. You want to have the car in gear with the parking brake on, blah, blah, blah. We know what we're doing. So part number wise, part wise, Bosch is the OE buying the genuine BMW is a complete waste of money. This is the Bosch 13477. You can read those numbers underneath there if that's not right, but that should be. These are from Amazon and these are 40 or $50 a piece on Amazon right now. That'll change, but definitely the best place to get them for now. So um, with the V8, the 540 and or the M5, um, there are two sensors in the downpipes before the catalytic converters then your cats, and then two more afterwards. If you're having codes regarding whatever it may be, we're not here to help you diagnose what the problem is, but if you've determined the problem to be oxygen sensors, that's what we're gonna be showing you how to do today. So we've already done the driver's side pre-cat um, sensor. We're now gonna move on to the uh, pre-cat passenger side sensor. So you open up the uh, new sensor, obviously on the right, and you have your sensor, small wiring harness, and then the electrical connector. Uh, these are obviously connected to the vehicle uh, electrical harness. So the old sensors on the left, that one is very well done. It's black and crispy and crusty and who knows how long it's been in there. The one on the right is obviously new and we're going to pop off the little cover that protects it. We'll see that they have very conservatively applied some never seize compound. The idea is as you thread it, that will uh, prevent it from uh, seizing into the bung. The bung is the part of the uh, exhaust pipe that uh, the threads are, are welded into. If yours is totally seized, you can't get it out or you round it out, you're going to have to cut out a couple inches of the exhaust pipe, um, the bung, and then weld in a new one. Um, probably going to want to have a shop do that. So to get the old one out, we kind of take some wire cutters and snip cut off the electrical connector. That way we can get our, we're using a 7 8, uh, 7 8 12 point socket just because it's the only one that fits. I highly recommend a 22 millimeter slash 7 8 uh, 6 point socket, but for us the, the 12 point is doing the job. So now we're gonna try to get a better look under here. And I'm gonna let Kenan take over. All right, so before anybody says anything, no, I don't have a giant oil leak. This is all a product called Fluid Film. Um, which is an anti-rust preventative. It stays looking like this all year long. I apply it once a year because we live in Ohio where they use salt and I daily this car. And as you can see, there is no rust under here at all. And it's gonna stay that way. Um, it's a wonderful product, can't speak of it enough, but it is really messy and it looks like this all the time. Anyway, so we're moving on. So we're about to disconnect the sensor. So it runs into this little box, um, which then connects to a wire, which runs to the front of the car to the ECU. Um, it is held in with two 10 millimeter plastic bolts on either side. So we're going to drop those down and then all it does is it just pressure fits into that sensor or into that, uh, that line. So all you do is just gently pull it apart. It doesn't really require much force at all. It's a very elegant design. And then um, the next step will be to cut this wire and uh, we'll show you that in just a second. I'm also going to link the specialty socket when it becomes time to put these back in place. We need a socket that has a bit of an open end like that. So we've determined that they're 7 eighths or 22 millimeters. Something like this will work fine when we remove them and cut the wire off. With no wire in there, slide that over the socket, back it out. Or slide that over the sensor and back it out. When it comes time to properly torque the new sensors into place, we need to uh, preserve the, the wire and the electrical contact. So this little guy here, this one is the uh, power built 7 8 slash 22 millimeter uh, two and a half inch depth oxygen vacuum CRV 048442 from Amazon. I think it was about 10 bucks. I will link that down below. It is a tool specifically for oxygen sensors. It's very useful. So when you take the box down, uh, all you're going to do is pop this out. It just sits in there with a little clip. I should be wearing goggles. I'm not, but because um, there are a lot of stones under here. And then all you do is just pull it out it comes. It's that easy. If you're doing the rear sensors, 
So it's the same process. Um, they also tuck into two little clips that are here to hold the wire up. Um, I just unclipped it so you could see in there, um, but make sure you tuck all that back in. So now the, the sensor is disconnected. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to cut it right here uh, at the very base, as, as close as you can get, because these sockets, although they're deep, they're not terribly deep. Um, they become slightly different in shape. Um, now, if you've done spark plugs, you know that they're shaped to hold spark plugs. It's a similar idea, but these are much, much thicker. Um, so it becomes a little bit more difficult um, to work with. So you just cut it as close as you can get to the end there, which I hate to cut OEM components, but that's the way it goes. The next thing you're going to want to do is this heat shielding is kind of in the way. This is a slightly different shape on the other side. Um, but I'm going to take a ball peen hammer and I'm just going to tap a little bit here so I can get a little bit more room with the socket um, to work with just so I'm not rubbing up against it. And also when you use the torque wrench to put it back on, um, it's going to be thicker naturally so you're going to want a little bit more space. So you're not really going to damage anything by reshaping it. Um, it's not that big of a deal. So just take it, make some tap marks in here, gain yourself a little bit more access and make the whole job quite a bit easier. So now backing it up, I mean it comes out quite easily once you've torqued it off. Um, they're pretty, pretty big threads. Oh yeah, nice and crusty. You can see the carbon coming out of there. Oh yeah, nice and toasty. Yeah, that one's done. Yeah, that one's done. But so, as we said, if, if you run into problems with that, you can try to put a breaker bar on your uh, your half inch. I definitely recommend using half inch drive tools for this. You can try to put a breaker bar or a pipe or something better to get more leverage. It's difficult when you're down here on the ground in the garage. If it's really not coming out or something bad happens to it, you're gonna have to cut this piece of exhaust pipe out there and weld in a new bung. This thing here's the bung. So hopefully you don't have that happen. Just a word of advice, if you are having difficulty getting it out, I recommend tightening it a little bit and then loosening. Um, sometimes if it's just stuck in one position, it's easier to move it forward and then move it backwards and it will come out. Um, again, you wanna probably do this when this is cool. This is cool to the touch. When it's hot, obviously the metal is going to be harder to work with um, and a lot more painful if you touch it. Um, so yeah, if it's stuck in there, try tightening and then loosening. Hopefully it comes out for you and you don't break anything. All right, so your torque spec for these is 50 newton meters, which is approximately 37 foot pounds. So set your torque wrench. Then we're going to use that special uh, cutout socket that Ryan mentioned. Um, so I'm actually going to position the socket first and then I'll position the torque wrench because it's big and clunky. So you just shove it in here. It's going to be tight on that wild wire, but it's not going to put too much stress on it because it's designed to do this. And then we're going to position the uh, torque wrench. It's going to be a little tough. So then I wish we had a lift here at E39 source, but that's the dream. Anyway, great. And then just torque her down. That's it. And that's all she wrote. Pretty easy. All right, so when you go to plug this in, it's difficult to film, but there are two different sides. It will only plug in in one direction. There's a cutout that's kind of shaped like, a bit like a triangle, and the other side is a square. You just line that up with the, uh, line that up the way it's supposed to fit. And ta-da, that's it. Pretty simple. Um, so then all you have to do is tuck this back in, put the bolts back on to where they belong. The nuts, they're plastic. The nuts, yeah. Plastic 10 mils. Yep, here's what they look like. They're found all over this car. Just put them back on. And then um, reset your computer if you're throwing code, if you're throwing a check engine light for O2 sensors, this should cure it. Um, they aren't really related to anything else. Usually if it's a sensor, it's a sensor. Um, they're not bad, this job is pretty easy, and it's good preventative. If you also notice significantly worse gas mileage, I mean an M5 gets bad gas mileage if you're driving it correctly anyway, but if you notice you're getting bad gas mileage, that's usually a sign that these are failing. Um, and that's exactly what I was experiencing. So that's just a, you know, it's good preventative to do. But well, generally part. your pre-cat oxygen sensors are sampling a lot worse quality air than the post-cat sensors, should your right. catalytic converters be functioning properly. That's so it's yeah. not <laughs> uncommon for these to wear first and need uh, replacement first. But really doing all four would probably be the best solution. Right. And I think you're gonna come back and revisit that. Right, the reason I didn't do all four is because we're leaving for California in a couple of days and these came in Amazon Prime and those ones don't. So that's why I did this first, because they wouldn't have shown up in time anyway. 
So I'll do the other ones. I'll order them, but I'll do them at a later date. Assuming your sensors come out, it's literally that easy. What was that, maybe a half an hour? Uh, Could have done it quicker. A um, couple extra minutes for those rear sensors if you're going to do all four, but uh, that's the O2 sensor change on an E39 M5. It would be very similar on any BMW from this time frame V8. Um, the inline sixes actually have the oxygen sensors built in the um, exhaust manifolds. So you guys have fun with that. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk in a future E39 source video. Good night.